Hey YouTube, it's Penny. I wanted to bring you a dream that I had on June 15th. I dreamt that my husband David and I were attending a church fellowship in what looked like um, the basement or fellowship hall of a church. And we donated a pie, so it was like a, it was a dessert of some sort <clears throat> that we were attending. And somebody, uh, a woman, brought us a receipt and David looked at the receipt and became upset because the church had taxed us on our donation. And he asked to speak to an elder about it. It took a really long time for an elder to finally show up. <clears throat> I'm not sure how much time in the dream lapsed, but we were waiting quite a while. And the, when he did show up, the first thing that he did was address me. And he told me that a word that I was using doesn't mean what I think it means. And I, I didn't want to argue with him, but I, I remember that I asked him, well, do you agree that it means the Spirit of God? And he consented that yes, it did, which apparently was how I was using it. Uh, that's the context that I was using that word. So I could only assume it was the Ruach HaKodesh. I, I don't know. but um. Anyway, I, I believe that this part of the dream symbolizes those in the church um, who just want to argue with those of us who are being called back to the Hebrew roots of our faith, and they don't get it, but once they actually, once you explain it to them and uh, you know confront them with the, the scriptural evidence uh, of why you're doing the things that you're doing, they back down and have are forced to agree anyway so at that point he further consented that after consulting with the other elders they could find no scriptural basis for their practice of collecting taxes on donations so when I woke up from the stream I was like they were taxing our donation that doesn't make any sense um, but I you know I believe it's symbolic and when I was praying about it Abba told me to look at Kings 22 and to make sure that I heard him correctly I said is it first Kings or second Kings 22 and I heard in my spirit second Kings 22 so I opened my Bible and I looked down <laughs> I was amazed I shouldn't be amazed when Abba does this but I opened my Bible to second Kings 22 so confirmation <laughs> anyway uh, Okay, so here's what it says, starting in verse 3. And it came to pass in the 18th year of King Josiah that the king sent Shaphan, the son of this other guy, the son of the, this other guy, <laughs> so these names are hard for me, the scribe, so this guy's a scribe, to the house of Yahavah, saying, Go up to Hikiel, the high priest, that he may sum or add up the silver which is brought into the house of Yahavah, which the keepers of the door have gathered of the people. Okay. And then let them deliver it into the hand of the doers of the work that have the oversight of the house of Yahweh and let them give it to the doers of the work, which is in the house of Yahweh to repair the breaches of the house unto carpenters and builders and masons and to buy timber and hewn stone to repair the house. So we're going to pay the workers. Uh, verse 7, Howbeit there was no reckoning made with them of the money that was delivered into their hand because they dealt faithfully. So in contrast to the elders in my dream who were not dealing faithfully, with um, with what was being given so I was fascinated that the Lord took me to that passage and then this morning when I was praying about it I asked him um, for a second witness and he said look in Matthew 17 so he did and here's what it says in verses 24 through 27 and when they were come to Capernaum they that received tribute money came to Kephas, or Peter, and said, what, excuse me, and said, does not your master pay tribute? He said, yes. And when he was come into the house, Yeshua prevented him, saying, what do you think, Simon, so second to Peter, 
Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? Of their own children or of strangers? And Peter said unto him, Of strangers. And Yahshua said unto him, Then are the children free. Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go to the sea and cast a hook and take up the fish that come first comes up and when you have opened his mouth you shall find a piece of money take that and give unto them for me and you so um because he took me to the book of second kings um it reminded me of something that happened years ago that i want to share with you just because the Lord has brought it back to my remembrance. So around 1997, uh, David and I were recruited to serve on the uh, building campaign marketing committee for the mega church that we were attending at the time. And Abba gave me the scripture in 1 Kings 6.12 that says, concerning this house which you are building, if you will walk in my statutes and execute my ordinances and keep all my commandments by walking in them, then I will carry out my word with you which I spoke unto David your father. That's the NASB translation and that's the translation I first found that scripture in. And so those three words that began that scripture concerning this house ended up being the actual campaign slogan that was approved by the elders for the building campaign. And I remember when I first presented this scripture at the elders retreat, I stressed the importance of the if then clause, mostly because I didn't understand it myself. I mean, it's it was definitely considering this house which you were building, if you will walk in my statutes and execute my ordinances and keep all of my commandments by walking, then I will carry out my word. So it's like it's this covenant. It's entering into this agreement with Yahweh. Um, and I was a little concerned about that because I was like, what are the what are the statutes and the ordinances? And I don't have never heard of these things before. Um, so in hindsight, I I now realize that not only did I not know what that meant, um, but that the elders of that church didn't know what it meant either. And so for any of you who are watching this video who still attend that church um, that's now under new leadership, I, it's not my intention to offend you, and I'm, I'm not trying to pick on that church, but I believe that all disciples of Yeshua, Jesus, need to ask ourselves this question. Does the leadership of my church understand the statutes the ordinances and the commandments of Yahweh. Are they teaching them to the people? Are they walking in them? And if not, may I humbly suggest that you consider asking the Father to lead you to a church, a called out assembly that does. Uh, I think that's all I'm gonna say about that. So. As uh, I have been instructed to do, I'm going to blow the shofar for you. Shemai Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Akkad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one.